If in the dark of a still night I wonder where you are Have you forgotten the starlight? Do you remember? Do you know you come with a lot of love? Do By peculiar coincidence, she happens to be under a personal contract to me. I'm her teacher, I'm her manager, I'm her everything. Everything? In a business way, strictly, Mr. Blender. To me, she's strictly bread and butter. A long time ago, I predicted to myself that with her, I will make a fortune. Just the other way around with me. Women cost me a fortune. Well, that's because you're marrying them. Confidentially, tell me, how do you feel after having had four wives? Hmm? Tired. Oh, oh, tired. Well, that's good. That's good. Well, now that you're tired, perhaps you will be able to settle down and present Miss Bernay in a musical company. With her voice, with your money, and with my brilliant managerial talent, why, she can't miss. Aren't you? Alex, I think she's got what it takes. Then you will sponsor her? Young man, I'll do even better than that. You, you will? I will. I'll marry her. Oh, that's wonderful news I've ever heard. Oh, that's what that you're saying. What? Ancestral Castle. 36 rooms, 12 baths, and a family of two. Isn't that a little crowded? Oh, awful. But I'm very seldom here. Stella has a place to herself most of the time. Stella? That's my grandmother. Come on, honey, you'll love her. Hi, Mary. You've come up? Yes, Mr. Blandy. Let me take your coat. Is the old girl going to bed? No, sir. She's in the living room. She was worried about you. <laughs> I'm 35 and still she worries. I think that's cute. Hello, Stella. Oh, Larry, I wish you wouldn't pop in on me like that. Well, how's my favorite grandmother? You young scalawag. Oh, Stella, I want you to meet Virginia Bernou. You can see that she's beautiful, but wait until you hear her sing. I'm glad to know you, my dear. Thank you. Oh, by the way, Stella, I may as well tell you now. I've just asked Virginia to marry me. Oh, Larry, not again. Mm-hmm. Poor child. You didn't accept. Well, I... Just a minute, my dear. Just a minute. Come with me. I'd like to show you the family skeleton. Oh, but really, I... Oh, uh, perfectly all right. We don't keep them in the closet in this house. We just hang them on the wall. <laughs> That's Grandma's idea of a joke, honey. You don't have to listen if you don't want to. I don't know what's come into you, young fella. You have no respect for your elders, whatever. Come along, my dear. Well, here's what's left of the Blendon family. Larry, myself, some memories, and a bunch of canceled checks. Canceled checks? Oh, women are an expensive hobby with Larry. Oh? oh, Virginia, I didn't mean you. Just an old lady's poor choice of words. I apologize, dear. I should think you would apologize, Stella. Oh, bosh. We women understand each other, don't we? Of course, Mrs. Blunt. Now, there's a sensible girl. You know, Virginia, I hate divorces. Sometimes they make me think people are just fooling when they get married. Marriage is a serious thing, Virginia. Sacred, too. It shouldn't be taken lightly. We do understand each other, Mrs. Blunt. 
Now, here's a fine specimen, Virginia. Larry's first wife, Catherine Corbett. She married Larry when he was 23. You don't snore, do you? Why, well, I don't think so. I'll have to listen some night. <laughs> I'll say this for Larry. He always picks beautiful women. Now, this one I call the perfume darling, Agatha Cowell. She's beautiful, all right, but it comes out of bottles and beauty parlors. Oh, you're just jealous. Oh, if I spend all day fixing myself up, I'd look like that, too. You bet you could, Grandma. Even better. Would you like to hear about the rest of our rogues gallery? Oh, I'm gay. You haven't discouraged me yet. Yeah, you sure must be gay. Now, this one, poor darling, didn't get much joy out of life. Serena Sims. She was a moody, nervous sort of girl. She's in the sanitarium now. Oh. Now, there's a hunk of woman. Ever hear of Maggie McCarthy? Maggie McCarthy? No, I don't believe I have. Maggie was known on the stage as Choo Choo Divine. Choo Choo Divine? Oh, the fan dancer. That's right. We were almost married, but I got cold feet at the last minute and called it off. Lucky break. <laughs> now, this one was pretty smart. Helen Varney. She was Larry's nurse after that skiing accident. She saved his life, and Larry married her. Oh, but she's gone back to nursing now. Well, that's all of them, Virginia. If I got my picture up there, would you be talking about me the same way? No, child. Not if you made Larry happy. I want him to have a good wife. If you make that harem scarum stay put, you have my blessing. Well, let's drink to it. Then we'll go out and finish painting the town blue to match the color of your eyes. All right, Larry, but may I make the toast? Why, certainly. It's your marriage. May my picture be the last one up on this wall. Well, good night, darling. Now look, pay no attention to Stella, that screwy teacher of yours or the gossip fellow. It doesn't make any difference what they say about it, does it? Mm -mm. Doesn't bother me a bit. Good night, Larry. Good night, darling. Only in the morning. Good from police headquarters. Police headquarters? Fantastic. Why should anybody do such a thing? I can't believe it. Mary, for heaven's sake, what's wrong? Virginia's been murdered. Murdered? Oh, Mary. What? How did... Someone shot her just as I was leaving her place. She was such a nice girl. Sweet, unspoiled. What are the police doing? Everything they can, I guess. There are no clues, nothing. But something's got to be done. Larry, what about Philo Vance? He's your friend. He'd be glad to help. Philo? Yes, I guess he would. But it's too late to do anything now. Go to bed, dear. You need your rest. All right, Larry. This is quite a shock. You better get some sleep, too. No, no, I've got to think. Go ahead, dear. Good night, Stella. Good night, Larry. Time to call, brother. I was asleep. 
Look, even if that golf game didn't tire you out, it did me. I... Pato, listen, please. Let me talk. You've got to help me. The girl I was going to marry has just been murdered. Murdered? I didn't even know there was a new girl. When did this happen, Larry? I... Larry? Hey, Larry! I don't know. I was asleep. Then there were two shots, and I'm all alone now, Philo. All alone. Did they call the police? Mary did. They'll be here soon. Only well, seems to be one wound, yet I heard two shots. Perhaps one missed, Mr. Dan. That doesn't seem possible. The shot to kill him was perfect, right between the eyes. That good a marksman wouldn't miss. Did you let anyone into the house tonight, Mary? Oh, no. No one, sir. It might be a good idea to find where those shots came from. What happened to the missing one? Mrs. Blendon, do you mind if I look around before the police get here? No, Philo. Go right ahead. I'm so confused. I don't understand. There doesn't seem to be any reason for it. Well, the killer either has a reason, Mrs. Blendon, or he'll invent one for his own use. To find a reason and... Find the reason, and you usually find the killer. Was uh, Larry in any kind of trouble, Mrs. Blandon? No more than usual. Who was this girl that was murdered? Virginia Berno. What do you know about her? Not much. I just met her here tonight. Tonight? Hmm? We'll have to have a long talk about... Oh. Ah! Catherine! Oh. Oh, go take that away from under oh, my nose. Mr. I'm Benton. all right. Go away. The gun's been fired all right. I don't want to take it out of her hands till the police get here. The boys get annoyed when I interfere. Who is she, Mrs. Blendon? Larry's first wife, Catherine Corbett. Do you know of any reason why she would kill him? Do you think she did? Well, it's possible, but why? That's the thing. I don't know. But wait. You spoke of reasons, Philo. Perhaps there is a reason. It may not be important, but... Everything is important in a murder, Mrs. Blendon. No, I don't know much about legal matters, Philo, but it seems that each of the women Larry was interested in, including that fan dancer, Choo Choo Divine, has a fortune coming to her through Larry's will. Do they know that? I'm afraid so. Oh, they shouldn't. But why was she killed? Did she stand to gain more than the others? No. I think Larry set aside two million dollars to be divided equally among the ex-wives and that stand dancer if any of them are living at the time the will goes to court. If they are living? Well, that's an invitation to murder if I ever heard one. Yes, I worried about it too, but Larry was stubborn. That means the fewer who are left at the time the will is probated, the more goes to each individual one. I suppose so. But nobody ever dreamed that... You can't tell what people would dream up when money's involved, Mrs. Blendon. Who on earth ever talked Larry into making a will like that? Well, it may have been his own idea. It may have been George Hullman. Hullman? His lawyer. He was... Okay, I'm sure. What are you doing hanging around here? Uh, well, if you must know, I came here tonight to, to challenge Mr. Blendon to a duel. You? Brother, I've heard all kinds of alibis. That's why I brought my two swords. Mr. Blendon, he was dead. He took away from me my bread and butter. And I slayed trying to make a great singer out of Virginia Bernay. And he comes... Virginia, huh? That's it. Maybe you can tell me why Virginia was killed tonight. Virginia killed? Yes. 
Oh, I, I didn't know. Who did? That's what I'd like to know. Oh, but she was great art. She was so young, so beautiful. I wouldn't have killed her. Oh, you've got to believe me, Mr. Mr. What's your name, please? Philo Vance. But oh, that's not Philo Vance. I've heard about you. Well, you've got to help to catch her murderer. You've got to help me. Help you? Well, I will not draw three breaths until her murder is avenged. The two other things you ought to avenge. Come in here. I want yes. you to see them. Oh, do that. Please. Like that. How do you do? That's what I want to do. Avenge things. What do you know about them? Two more. Oh, Mr. Vance, this is absolutely gruesome. Who did this thing? I don't know, but maybe you do. Me? I think the police would like to hear about it. Police? Oh, oh I have nothing to do with it. Well, we'll find out about well, that. What are you trying to do? Pin up a, a criminal punishment on me? Philo! Philo! Oh, are you all right? Just a bump. Did he get away? Yes. Do, do you suppose he could have shot Catherine? I doubt it. Otherwise, he wouldn't be hanging around the grounds. But he did know Virginia Bernot. Look, Mrs. Bannon, I'm not going to wait around here for these. When they get here, you tell them exactly what told me. If they want me for anything, they can get me at the hotel. Oh, Philo, you will help me. Of course. I'll call you in the morning. Hello, Mr. Vance. What the blazes? Who are you? This is who am I? This is just in case police are still looking for me. Oh, the man with the swords, huh? You know, I ought to pay hey, you back. Please, please, don't bother. I, you can know. What are you doing here? What do you want? Well, I come here for two purposes. First, to prove to you that I'm not a murderer. For if I was, I certainly wouldn't be coming over here for you to catch myself. Now, that's purely psychological answer. All right. What else? What else? What else? What else could it be? I want to help you to find the man who murdered Virginia Burnett. How do you know it was a man? Uh-huh. It's all right. You're going to get technical with me. It wasn't a man. It was a, it was a woman, a polar bear, a jackass. How do I know who done it? All right. All right. Don't get excited. How did you get in here? Oh. <laughs> when I was in Siberia and so a little boy, I, I was a locksmith. That oh. is before. That's before I, I sang, you know, in, 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 in a theater, an imperial theater, in front of the Tsar. The Tsar? Okay, and the chorus in the back. So you want to help me find the person who's been committing these murders, eh? Prezact. And when I find him, I will kill him from limb to limb until he's very dead. Let's don't dilly dally, Mr. Vance. You just give me the, the, the orders, and, and I will help you to find the murderer, or, or my name isn't... Alexis, Peter, Andrei, Igor, Ivan, Stepan, Svetlan, Leonid, Semyonovich. Come to the point. Karnov. Karnov. Alexis Karnov. Uh, the rest of them are just my maiden name. Huh. Alexis Karnov. Here, you sit down here. Light somewhere. You make me nervous. So you want to help, huh? That's right. Uh, all right. All right, I'll cut you in. But remember, you have to get your head shot off just the same as anyone else. But you see... Did you know Larry Blendon very well? Of course I knew him. But he didn't act as a friend when he, when he took away my bread and... What do you know about his will? Butter. Hmm? A will? Oh, nothing. Nothing at all. But that's one place I would like to be in his will. You know, anybody who's mentioned in that will is apt to be a murderer. I've made a list of all the women in Larry's life. Now, the first one on the list is Agatha Cowell. You can start with her. Start with her? Start what? Ooh, investigate. Find out things. Just things? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Just ask questions. But don't let her know you're asking them. Come in. Pants? Yes. My name is George Holman. Oh, Holman. I was just getting dressed to come down to your office. Shall I ask why you were coming to see me, or shall you ask why I've come to see you? Well, it's your visit. Suppose you start. Very well. According to this morning's paper, you're going to work on the Blendon case. How did the papers know about it? Well, Mrs. Blendon gave them a statement. That's great. That makes me a perfect target for the killer. Well, I thought she used poor judgment myself. 
However, I came up here to offer my services. Did you come down here to find out what I know or to tell me what you know? I'll see here, Vance. I don't think that's the proper spirit for you. Oh, really? I've already got a tag on me, Holman, and I don't want to end up in the morgue like the others. This case has to be wiped off the books before I am, and the only way you can help me is to answer my questions. All right, what do you want to know? Why on earth did you ever allow Larry Blendon to draw up such a will? Well, how would I have no other choice? It's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard of. Ridiculous, yes, because Blendon let it be known what's in the will. How do you know it was Blendon that gave out the information? I was with him the night he proposed to one of his wives. He told her about the will as an inducement to marry him. Which one was that? Well, I don't wish to incriminate anyone. I... Look, Hellman, three people have been murdered already, and you're worried about incriminating someone. If that woman is a killer, let her hang. Who is it? Helen Barney. Oh. Mr. Vance, I'm back. I'm just coming from Agatha Cow's house. And you know it's a peculiar... Uh, uh, Alex, this is Mr. Holman. He's the Blendon lawyer. What's your name, please? Holman. Cardinal. How do you do? Feeling is likewise. Is there anything else you want to ask? Yeah, I'd like to find out... Uh, if... uh, not just now. Later, perhaps. I'm, uh, I'm sorry I blew up, but I don't like being put on the spot by the newspapers and Mrs. Blendon. I understand. Just call me if you want me, Mr. Vance. Thank you. Cardinal. Did I make a fox pass about Agatha Cow? It was a stroke of genius, Alex. It was? Yes, I was watching his face when you said you'd been to the Cow home. He didn't like it. You mean there is some interconnection between this woman and Hellman? Could be. What else did you find out? Nothing. I went to the house to demonstrate the cosmetics and ask a few questions, but nobody home. You know, there's a funny thing. Uh, uh, there's some bottles of milk and some newspapers all piled up on the front porch. Oh. If she'd been going away, she'd have stopped delivery. Alex, with your genius for picking locks and my curiosity, we're going to pay a visit to the cow home tonight. Milk bottles, newspapers, like I told you. All right, all right, come on, we haven't got all night. I feel more like a crook than a detective. Yeah, and if the police get us, that's exactly how they'll treat us. This clock is beating. I'm not quite sure. or there's a pipe broken up there. They don't need no detectives here. They need a plumber. Come on, let's take a look. Hey, I hear water. Look. This could have happened any time within the last two or three days. Say, hey. could bath bubbles last that long? I don't know. I'm a strictly shower man myself. 
Feels like glue. Come on, Alec. We better let the police in on this one. Anyway, it is a nice, clean way to die. Someone's coming in. You're walking in your sleep. You're in trouble. Oh, look, Vance, I, I can explain everything. I better make it a good one, Holman. There's a dead woman upstairs. Dead who? Who is it? Agatha Cow. No. No, it can't be. I've got to see her. Oh, no. Get out of my way, Red! Rookie! Get that out of his pocket, Alex. Contract between you and Agatha Cow. Yes. Who killed her, Vance? You answer my questions. What's so important about this is you have to break into a safe in the middle of the night. It's a contract to finance Agatha's next show. I'm going to run for district attorney, and being a married man, my enemies might have used the information of my friendly relations with Agatha against me. That's all there is to it, I swear. All right, get them up. All of you. Three of you now, huh? Housebreaking and robbery, huh? Okay, don't move. I'm calling headquarters. While you're at it, you might as well tell them there's a dead woman upstairs. Don't tell me what I'm going to tell them. I know what I'm doing. A dead woman? You better ask for Detectives Millard and Harper. They'll give you the best service. Police Department. University Precinct. You've done a lot of talking, Vance, but there's still nothing that says you and that Russian guy couldn't have been in on this. Oh, come now, Lieutenant. Well, you broke in here, didn't you? I told you Mrs. Blendon retained me to investigate the case. You still broke in. All right, so I broke in, and now I'm under arrest. That's certainly going to help you solve this mess. Solve oh, what mess? The car in it said it looked like a heart attack. Sure, it looks like it, but I think you'll find some pretty good motives for it being something else. Such as what? Such as murder. Murder? Yeah. Well, if it is murder, Vance, we'll soon find out. Right now, you're all going down to headquarters. Okay. Well, boys, my old friend, Detective Millard, says we're all under arrest. Gentlemen, please, if, if this gets in the papers, it'll, it'll ruin me. If you're not guilty of anything, you don't have anything to worry about. I can't go to jail because I've got to practice my singing. My voice will get rusty. It'll be worse than that if we put a rope around your neck. Take him away, Harper. I just don't you, you, you don't understand, gentlemen. No, I... Pre mi fa so la 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 si do 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 do. You know, my knees are all right, but my do's are not so good. Do re mi fa so la 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 si do 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 do. You've got the confounded bracket. Bracket? I think we better have some quiet, Alex. After all, Mr. Holman's been through quite a lot. What's with me here? Picnic? Alex, thanks. My, my nerves are on edge. You men's got to practice? Tell me, Holman. What do you know about the rest of Larry's women? The only one I was friendly with was Galena Sims. I haven't seen her for three or four months. She's in the sanitarium with a nervous breakdown. Do you understand if I don't practice every day in school? She had a nervous breakdown, hmm? What sanitarium? It's called Shady View, run by Dr. Sandman. Incidentally, uh, Helen Barney, who was formerly married to Larry, is head nurse at Shady View. Get attracted? My bread and butter? Where is this place? In the outskirts of town. What is it, one of these high-walled institutions? Oh, no, no, it's not an insane asylum, Van. The patients come and go pretty much as they please. Fair-shaped stones gonna turn out fuzzy-like features. So they come and go as they please, eh? Your hunch about Agatha the cow being murdered was right, Van. You are taught to reveal poison. Poison? Yeah, Cardi and I, the mighty slick job it was, too. Somebody who knew chemicals mixed the poison with the bubble bath. It was absorbed through the poison of the skin. Did you check with the manufacturer of the bubble bath? Yeah, we sent our lab man through his plant, but his stuff is okay. Look here, my lord, there's no time to lose. Every one of those women in Larry's will is in danger of being murdered. You've got to let me out of here. Keep your shirt on. You can all leave. We've checked your alibis and they're all okay. Thank heaven. Take a tip, man. Stop fooling around with this case or you're liable to wind up right back here again. Okay, I'll quit. Let you stumble along by yourself. You'll still be in business. Yeah, so will the murderer. 
Now, look, Alex. In the morning, I'm going to see Lorena Sims. I want you to go see this, uh, this bubble dancer. What's her name? Choo Choo Divine. That's right. I want you to find out everything you can. Now, this is important, Alex. Use your head. No, no, no. I will use my personality. Fine, fine. We'll meet at the hotel later. Now, let's get out of here. Okay, pleasure. <laughs> Excuse me, uh, Choo Choo? Huh? Choo Choo Divine? Oh, no. Where is Choo Choo Divine? That's the dressing room. Oh. Hey. What do you want? Uh, I would like to see Miss Choo Choo Divine, please. Why? Well, I'm sure it wouldn't interest you. I'm catering strictly to the ladies. What are you selling? Selling? Oh, nothing, nothing at all. This is a wonderful new line of cosmetics, which I'm giving away free for nothing and absolutely gratis. A sample. Sample? Let them in, Yates. Well, okay, but I don't like his looks. And who would you like me to look like in order to give away samples? Tchaikovsky, hmm? Oh, he looks harmless, Yates. You can relax. <laughs> Thank you. Don't mind him, buddy. He's just my bodyguard. <laughs> Uh, hmm. Do we need an assistant? You got a union card? <laughs> Don't get technical. Uh, now, uh, what are you giving away? Oh, everything, everything. I've got here the most wonderful line of cosmetics. Look, lipstick, mascara, cold cream, hand lotion. What can you use? I can use them all if they're free. Oh? Sure, don't let the star stuff fool you. I'm just hanging on by the skin of my teeth until I hit the jackpot. A uh, jackpot? Oh, jackpot. <laughs> that sounds like money. Uh, you expecting some, maybe? Yeah. Somebody popped off Larry Blendon's. Now I'll inherit plenty. Mmm. Mmm. Smells good. Well, uh, here. It smells good. It works good. I will demonstrate for you. What? What? You hold it for a moment. Thank you. Here. Look. You just uh, rub it in, you know. Um, before it, you know it, it vanishes completely. Smell. Mmm. You like it? Yeah. It's yours. Thanks. This. This lipstick. It's the most wonderful kiss-proof lipstick here, darling. Let me show you. Oh, no, I just made up. I just got myself ready for the show. All right, I will demonstrate it myself. Now, just watch, watch. You put it on, you put it on the same way, you know, as a, as a regular lipstick, you know. Just like, like any ordinary one. Hmm? See? <laughs> the improvement is amazing. But how do I know that stuff kiss-proof? That I will demonstrate, too. Hey, just a minute, you. Go away, Yates. Can't you see the man is demonstrating? Demonstrating? Yeah. Go on, go on, go on, go on, go on. I'll bet you sell a lot of lipstick that way, buddy. Well, I tried to demonstrate everything you know. Have you got any other products, baby? Choo mm. choo. Woo hoo hoo. Vance? Yes. Nice to know you, Dr. Sandman. Have a seat, please. Thank you. Something most unfortunate has occurred since you phoned me this morning. Oh? Lorena Sims isn't here. You mean she escaped? We don't use such a term in connection with our patients, Mr. Vance. She just left, and we don't know where. We, um, we've already notified the police. The police? But doesn't she have a right to leave any time she wants to? Mrs. Sims is a neurotic, an advanced case. We've even considered transferring her to an asylum, but her husband thought we might cure her. Now, Doctor, do you think she's capable of murder? Frankly, I don't know. Possible, yes. Would she have been able to leave here any time she wanted to and return without you knowing it? No, we keep an accurate check on all our patients. I'm afraid this is going to sound bad, but... Go on. She did leave several times. We did know it. She returned each time, so we weren't worried until these killings started. That's all we need is to have a psychopathic running around loose. Mr. Vance, my head nurse, Miss Helen Barney. How do you do? How do you do, Mr. Vance? We were just discussing Lorena Sims' disappearance. It's in connection with the blending case, isn't it? Uh, yes. You think Lorena might have something to do with these murders? Well, I... So do I. Helen, I'm sure she hasn't. 
There's no such thing as being sure, Doctor, until the real murderer is caught. Tell me, would Lorena Sims have had access to any medicines or chemicals used here? Well, I... Maybe. But why? If she got those chemicals and knew how to use them, she couldn't be too crazy. Are you insinuating that I don't know what I'm doing, Vance? That woman is neurotic and could be dangerous. So could anybody connected with this case, Doctor, including herself and Miss Farney. Mr. Vance, you're talking sheer nonsense. What reason would I have... You're to... one of the heirs, too, Miss Varney. You might want to get Mrs. Sims out of the way. Well, thank you for the talk. You've been most helpful. Be seeing you. And then the door is opened by a big bruiser. Her bodyguard, should you say. So I demonstrated the cosmetics and found out that she's flat broke, just sitting around waiting for the will to be read. Yeah. What else? I think we're engaged. You what? Well, I guess that happened right after I demonstrated the kiss-proof lipstick. How do you know she isn't the murderer? Well, I become engaged with reservation. If she doesn't go to electric chair, we'll get married. Well, you certainly work fast. Well, I'm a fast man, Mr. Vance. You know, Chuchu Logic and myself. Oh. Chuchu Logic, Chuchu Logic. Oh, I forgot to tell you. Chuchu Logic, that's Chuchu in Russian for short, you know. <laughs> anyway, she's beautiful. She's beautiful. She's got two fans. She can dance. And, uh, and she's going to inherit a lot of money. After that last part, I'm very alert. Hello, Mary. Hello. Excuse me. Likewise. Mrs. Blendon is in the living room, please. Oh, thank you. Wait here, will you, Alex? You've got talent. What is it, Mrs. Blendon? What's the trouble? Oh, Philo, this is Lorena Sims. Lorena Sims? Well, I didn't expect to find you here. Oh, Philo, it's terrible. She's been in that awful shady you place, poor dear. Yes, I know. I was out there today, looking for you. You were? What did you want? Why did you want me? Well, just to have a talk with you, Mrs. Sims. What do you know about chemistry? Chemistry? I... nothing. Nothing at all. You're not ill at all, are you? Oh, no. That's what I tried to tell everyone. You do believe me, don't you? Someone's got to believe me. Yes, of course. Tell me, Mrs. Sims, did you go to this sanitarium of your own free will? No. My husband made me go. He said I was sick, that I could be cured. He kept pestering me and nagging me. He almost had me believing something was wrong. I went to the sanitarium. But it was a mistake, Mr. Vance, a mistake. They wouldn't let me go. Dr. Sandman told me that you had the run of the place. That you left there several times and always came back. Oh, that's a lie. They kept me there. They wouldn't let me out. I was a prisoner. <laughs> there, there, Lorena. You are safe now. You won't make me go back, will you? I couldn't stand anymore. No, child. You can stay right here if you like until we find out what this is all about. I think I know what it's all about, Mrs. Blendon. Yes? Well, I, I can't tell you now. I've got to make sure. I'm sorry I caused the scene. But my nerves have been so ragged. Now, now, don't worry. Philo's a very understanding man, as men go. Yes. I, I feel a mess. Do, re, mi, fa, so, la, ti, do. Hi there. Do. Hold it. Do. That's bad. There is this coming out fair shape, you see. Before it was a little fuzzy, like peaches. Now comes like beautiful. Mm. Let's try it again. Tell me, Mrs. Sims, what does your husband do? He's in the antique business. Sims Limited. Oh, yes. Out on La Cienega Boulevard. Does he do a good business? He used to. I don't know whether he does now or not. I see. You're tired, honey. You better go upstairs and lie down while I talk to Philo. Perhaps I'd better. Will you excuse me, Mr. Van? Certainly. And thanks for believing me. Philo, with the murderer still at large, do you think Lorena will be safe here? Yes, I, I think so. Mr. Vance, if you see my husband, I... Mr. Vance, you... you... Mr. Vance! Philo, what's wrong with us? What's happened? What do you think it is? I don't know, Mrs. Blendon. I'm not sure. Call your doctor. Tell him to get here immediately. Tell him it may be poison. Poison? Yes, which way's your kitchen? Through that door, down the hall. Alex, keep her lungs pumping. Give her artificial respiration. I'll be right back. Oh, my God. 
Please, lady. Please, breathe for me. Come on, this is only artificial respiration, but if you keep on living, we'll get you a genuine one. Come on. Please hurry, please. Dr. Campbell. Yes, yes Mr. Yes. Vance thinks it's poison. Hey, you, Niam, breathe. Hey, you, Niam, breathe. Hey, you, Niam, breathe. I'm Lieutenant Millard of Homicide. Where's Van? Inside, Lieutenant. Hey, you, Niam, breathe. Hey, hey, you, Niam. Well, what's this? Artificial inspiration. Lieutenant Millard. Yeah. Say, what's going on here? It's Mrs. Sims, final thing. She's been poisoned. Poisoned? Films. Say, ain't that the name of the dame who escaped in the sanitarium? Yeah. She's been poisoned, eh? Just wait till I get my hands on Vance. Hello, my lord. Oh, lift her up, Alec. Look at here, Vance. You always seem to be around when somebody's getting the business. Poison, eh? And don't tell me you don't know anything about anything. Because we capped your phone and we know you went to the sanitarium and then you came here. Keep talking, my lord. That foghorn of yours ought to wake her up. She's coming too. Hey, Lieutenant, you should rent out your voice to the hospital. Ah, shut up. Uh, anything I say from now on is going to be strictly through my lawyer. Hey, Vance, how did you know what kind of antidote to use? I didn't. I'm just taking a chance that it's the same thing that killed Agatha Cowell, Cardi and I. You told me about that, Lieutenant. Yeah, but you seem to know too much about that poison. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. I tried to kill her myself just for the fun of giving her the antidote. Oh, Dr. Campbell, thank heaven. I took a chance it was Cardi and I, Doctor. I gave her raw egg and brandy. I see. A severe shock, but she seems to be responding all right. Well, should we go, old jailer? Listen, Vance, I don't know what you're up to, but if you don't stop getting into my hair... The last place in the world I want to be, Lieutenant. I was only here minding my one own... Of these days, you're going to go one step too far, and then I'll... You'll hate yourself in the morning. Now, seriously, my lord, I'm here on the level. Larry Blendon was my friend, so she's grandmother. I'm only trying to help. Okay. But just don't be around if there's another murder committed. Unless it's your own. <laughs> Score one for the police department. May we go now? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Just leave me alone. Thanks. Oh, by the way, I don't like to sound like a cop. But you better have the lipstick in your handbag analyzed. I think you'll find it's a murder weapon. Come along, Alex. <laughs> Open this lock. Foregone seclusion. Uh, would you mind telling me why we're here? I'm going to take a peek at the books of Sims Limited. I think we'll find Gregory Sims was in financial difficulty. The class is getting sicker and sicker. Yeah, yeah, go on, go on. Hey, I'm getting pretty good. Pick the lock without even touching it. Funny that door would be open. You wait here in case anybody comes. What are you doing down here? Why, uh, I was having a talk with Greg Sims, but uh, he got a call and had to run out. I've known Greg ever since he was a child, Philo. And I can't imagine what's come over him. He's acting so strangely toward Lorena. You mean about the sanitarium? Yes. He's done this to Lorena deliberately, Philo. And whatever his reason, it's bad. I want Greg and Lorena to be happy. I just couldn't stand another one of those awful divorces. There'll be no divorce when I get through telling Greg what I think of him. I doubt whether it would do much good, Mrs. Blendon. I'm afraid Sims is a pretty desperate person these days. Is it money, Philo? Good heavens. If it is, I'd gladly have lent it to him. That seems overly generous of you, Mrs. Blendon. <laughs> Bosh, Philo, I'm more than I need, you know that. Greg's mother was my closest friend. It's the least I can do. Do you think Sims will be back soon? Why, yes, he should be. Would you mind if I talk to him instead of you? Not at all. As long as you tell him what I think of him. And make it strong. Leave it to me. If I find out anything important, I'll telephone you. In the meantime, don't tell Lorena that you saw me here. It might upset her. I won't. Good night, Philo. Good night. And thanks again.
are you supposed to be, a sheepdog? No, I'm going to a masquerade, merely disguised as a... as a disguise. Huh. Hmm. Come on up. Come on up. All so long. Yes, yeah, thanks. As long as this is only a false alarm, I might as well tell you, this is only a water pistol. A water pistol? Yes, look. That's fine. Suppose I'd had to kill somebody. Oh, you couldn't do that, but you surely could get him wet and give him pneumonia. You're a great help, but I haven't got time to drown the murderer. Just because you've got nine lives, you think everybody else has, hmm? She wouldn't have been much good to your choo-choo with that sticking in you. Put in there. I tell you, Craig, Wait a minute. Only Blended was here, but I guess she left. I don't want her hearing this. Now what happened? Look, Greg, Lorena tricked the guard. We couldn't help it if she got away. You couldn't help it? Well, that's great. What if she goes to the police? The police couldn't prove a thing. Oh, no. Sandman's the head of a respectable institution. They can't prove anything against him. But what about me? This whole thing was your idea. You had to expect to take chances. Now, look, Helen. Lorena's worth over $100,000 in cash. With the doctor's help, I could have had her declared incompetent. Got my hands on that money. Maybe you can still get it back to the sanitarium. Oh, no, that's your job. You agreed to take care of everything, remember? What am I giving you $25,000 for? Even $25,000 isn't worth the chances we're taking. No, Greg, if you don't get Lorena back, the doctor and I are washing our hands of the whole mess. Well, you are, are you? And leave me holding the bag. Well, you can't get away with it. All I have to do is to go to the police. You wouldn't dare. You're just as frightened as we are. I'm sorry I let you talk us into this. I'd be satisfied with just my own inheritance from Larry's will. No, Greg. You can hold the bag. Why, I ought to kill you. Oh, no, you don't. Don't shoot, please. So you ought to kill me, eh? Maybe that's a little habit of yours, going around killing off Larry's ex-wife so Lorena can get more money. Oh, no, you can't pin those murders on me. In fact, I know more about the real murder than anyone. Maybe you do and maybe you don't. That's your business. But whatever you do about it, don't be too much of a fool. All right, but just, just put that gun away. Not until after I get out of here. Walk ahead of me to the door. he didn't answer the phone. Hey, that's the knife that almost caught you, Alex. Do you think Helen Varney did it? Certainly looks that way. We heard both of them going to the door, but only one set of footsteps coming back. That's right. How could a woman do such a thing? You'd be surprised. Come on, we got to get out of that sanitarium. You know, Mr. Vance, last night I couldn't sleep, so I was previewing this case to myself, and I came to the following seclusion. Of all the Larry Blendon's women, there is only three left. Uh, Helen, Lorena, and my Chuchulotic Divine. 
And you're hoping that your tutu, whatever you call her, isn't the killer. That's right. You know, when we will get married, I will never drink a cocktail before dinner. Mm -mm. I will take an antidote. Sorry we kept you waiting, Vance. Is something wrong? Yes, I thought you might like to be among the first to know that Greg Sims has been murdered. Greg Sims? Yes. Oh, it's too bad. I only knew him slightly. I know. Just about $25,000 worth. Come on, quit stalling, Sandman. I was out at Sims' store tonight when Helen Varney was there talking to him. And you, you heard everything? Enough. She had plenty of reasons to bury a knife in his back. Oh, no, no, Vance, you're wrong. Helen wouldn't kill anyone. We were involved with Greg to a certain extent, but not murder. Well, that you're going to have to prove. Where is she now? She, she's still out. She went over to see Mrs. Blendon about Lorena. Oh, you found Lorena, eh? Yes, Helen phoned. She was at Mrs. Blendon's. Well, that didn't take you very long. But Mrs. Blendon refused to let her see her. Vance, please believe me, neither Helen nor I would kill anyone. We would... Helen. Quick, Doctor, you better get something for her. I think it's that cardionide again. Cardionide? Yes, it's probably in this lipstick. I wonder where she got that. Come on, Alex, get to work. Oh, what now? Artificial inspiration? No, no, the doctor will have an antidote for her. I think you got her in time, Doctor. Mr. Vance. Lorena. Lorena. Helen, what is it? What does it tell me? Don't let Greg. Greg get near Lorena. You see, Vance, she thinks Greg is still alive. Alive. Crazy. Helen. Helen, do you hear me? Helen, did Stella Blendon give you this lipstick? Granba! No, I... I bought it. Oh, you did? Yes, sir. But, but I... I'd left it at the Blendon last week. I just got it back tonight. That's it? You... you mean advance that the murderer is Stella Blendon? Yes. I'd better get out there right away. Unless I miss my guess, Lorena's next. Shall I go with you? No, no, you stay here and take care of Helen. And don't try to run out. It'll only make it worse. I'll be here. Okay, come on, Alex. Hey, Mr. Vance. Why do you think Grandma is the murderer? Hmm? For several reasons. I just found out tonight that Mrs. Blendon really hated all of Larry's women. She thought they'd made a fool of him. She was right. If you remember, she was the only one who knew that Virginia Bernot was going to get married to Larry. Oh, she knew, eh? She knew. Even I, her exclusive manager, didn't know, but she knew. <laughs> also, there never was a clue as to who was sending those cosmetics to the women until tonight. Mm, that's right. Nobody had their hands on Helen's lipstick except Helen and Grandma. That's right. Huh. Yes, but why should she kill Greg Sam? Reach in my pocket. You'll find a piece of paper there. Stella, there are a few things about your past the police would like to know. $50,000 will keep me quiet. Bring the cash with you tonight to the store. I will be waiting. Greg. <laughs> Where did you get the stuff? I found it in Sim's office. Mrs. Blender must have dropped it there. Easy in your grave, Catherine Corbett. I've been waiting to do this. And there's no one here tonight but Lorena and me. You killed my grandson and I killed you. Leeches, parasites, all of you. You made a weakling out of my grandson. The only one that was left to carry on the name of Blendon. You didn't just kill a man, you killed a name. You fools. True, clever, vicious fools. <laughs> What do you suppose Grandma is keeping quiet about, hmm? I don't know yet. Whatever it is, Sims was trying to blackmail her about it. That's why she was down at his store tonight. I have a hunch it wasn't the money she was worried about. <laughs> I hope I never get to be a Grandma. You were smart, Agatha. But I was smarter. See, I knew your weakness. Perfumes, bubble bath, 
You love such a thing. You knew every trick to catch my Larry. And you paid too for robbing me of my family. And you'll all pay. Pay with your lives. You sleep peacefully upstairs, Lorena. Of all of them, you were not too bad. But you failed too, Lorena. You failed too. Or I would let you live. Or I would let you live. Mr. Vance is doing 75. I'm very glad I paid my insurance premium. I'm sorry, Alex. Lorena's life's in danger. Maybe it'll help us to close your eyes. No, thanks. When I die, I want to see where I'm going. Warm milk. Very soothing, Lorena. It will put you to sleep. You will sleep well and long. I don't know how you do it, Mr. Vance, but if I was driving this boat, I would be getting a ticket by now. Uh oh Motorcycle cop. <laughs> Speak of the devil. I had to open my big Russian accent. Well, we just have to try and beat him. I haven't got time to stop. You mean you're going to go faster? Yeah, hold on. <laughs> Because I woke up suddenly. <laughs> Sorry. I don't want to seem like a kill, Joey, but he's gaining well, We're going as fast as we can. Well, please believe me. That's enough for me. Please believe me. Is it much farther? No. I only hope we get there in time to save Lorena. I just hope we get there. Period. Oh, not too late. Yes, quite late. But I couldn't sleep. It's just as well. You're supposed to have some of this warm milk, my dear. Please, Stella, I hate milk. You want to get better, don't you, Lorena? Well, if I must, I must. I'll drink it in a moment. I'm not fully awake yet. Mary, where's Mrs. Blendman? She just went upstairs with a glass of milk for Mrs. Sims. Now drink your milk and go back to sleep. All right, Stella. Mrs. Sims! Well, you're alive. At least that's something. Alive? Yes, it's a good thing you didn't drink that milk. Well, what in the world are you talking about, Philo? I think you know what I'm talking about, Mrs. Blandon. Why, well, no, I... Would you like to drink some of this milk? Uh, no, no, I, I, I don't... Of course you don't, because you know there's poison in it. Hey, Philo, this guy, he don't believe we're going through a murder. Hey, what's going on here? Just a slight case of attempted murder, officer. Why did you do it, Mrs. Blandon? Why? Because I had to. They killed Larry, didn't they? They? Catherine shot Larry, and I killed her. But all of them really killed him. He wasn't a man, Philo. He was nothing, a weakling. Those women didn't love and respect Larry as a husband. The whole thing was a mockery of marriage. I've always thought of marriage as something beautiful. There never were divorces in the Blendon family. I see. But what about Gregory Sims? Greg? Greg? Sure, little Greg. Yeah, he wanted money too. Everyone wants money. He, he was a cute little boy once. But he remembered. He remembered I was a chemist when I was a young girl. Greg knew. His mother and I had been friends. She told him. But he shouldn't have remembered. I didn't want to kill him. But he knew about the poison. I didn't want to kill him. I didn't want to kill anybody. 
Well, I guess it's all yours, officer. Yeah. Don't drink that. They'll need it for evidence. Come along, Alec. Well, you better call Detective Millard. Tell him Vance says, guess who? Then we'll get your five here. He'll give you the wrong answer.